Hello, comrades. My name is some guy, and this, this is my terrible Russian accent. Oh my god, all my Russian friends, all none of them were probably very upset there. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between, I am the pixelated incarnation of some guy. And I'm here today to overanalyze a brand spanking new 3D point and click adventure game known as Undercover Missions. Something about a sub. You can read the title, I ain't about to butcher that word. But nevertheless, as I mentioned, this is a brand new point and click about a Russian sub tragedy that was made by a bunch of Germans. At least that's what my facts had led me to believe. But to be honest with you, there is hardly any information out there about this game, other than it exists. I kind of suspect, though, there's some nice and interesting backstory to this title, but I don't know if that's ever going to come to light. So with that said, let's begin the over-analysis of Undercover Missions across gate. Oh my goodness, I'm there. I'm, let's just start it. Well, this is a rather minimalistic main menu, but hey, there's some jamming tunes for us to listen to. Ooh, I feel pride for the motherland already. All hands on board die. Well, that's not necessarily a terrible English sentence. It does sound a bit weird to my American ears. A kind of peculiar word choice. You'd think, oh, all hands aboard died. But hey, it's not going to be the first time in this game where you're going to notice some odd phrases. I kind of suspect that whoever translated this game was not a native English speaker. <laughs> Oh looky here, we're in a cutscene. And what our eyeballs are taking in right now is an image of the Winter Palace Square in St. Petersburg in, well, Russia. Now I can't figure out if this is concept art or if this is just a picture with some fancy filter effects thrown atop of it. What do you think? Because I can't really tell. That dome right there, I don't know, it seems a little handmade to me, but everything else, uh, it's walking the line. Oh yeah, I should probably get back to the game. Colonel. A charred body was found this morning. Everything indicates that it is Agent Melenkov. Where was the body found? Where was this voice actor found? In Murmansk, near the port. Hmm. So these anonymous hints meant something. So, so far, I have a vague understanding about what's going on in the game. Some dude named Melikov had his body burned, alive or dead, I'm not sure, and some anonymous tips could have informed them about this, I guess? We need a camouflage location nearby. Remember back, oh, about a minute ago when I said something about odd word choices? A welcome to one of them. We need a camouflage. What the hell does that even mean? Take care of it, and bring me Believa. I need her. And scene. So that ends the intro cinematic. Yeah, I didn't really get a whole lot out of that. Thank you for coming so quickly, Milana Ivanovna. I really think I heard this voice actor's work before. I suspect he worked on Operation Valkyrie, which was a Russian 3D point-and-click adventure game. So now I'm confused as to the nationality of the game dev. It's fancy here, sir. That's all we could organize at a short notice. Well, that's just what the game developer's money could buy. What? Art assets aren't cheap, folks. And what are we doing here? Business with rubber hoses and tires. I understand. Oh, I get it. It's simple because it's a torture chamber. Oh god, why the hell are we here? Milena, there are new problems. Give me ten minutes, then I'll update you. This is your desk. Okay, so we're at the tutorial part, and we have new problems now, apparently. So I have to wait 10 minutes for this guy to come back. Right. Still have no clue as to what the hell is going on in this game. Except we're in a torture chamber now. But hey, we got a nice desk, I guess. And oh my god, are my eyes deceiving me? I haven't even cracked open a beer yet, but yeah! Well, those keys definitely say pussy car on it. Wow. <laughs> Alright, game. So armed with our pussy car keys, what the hell do we do? Why we click on every single thing in this room? Cause you see, 
When that character said, be back in 10 minutes, he meant, I'll be back after you examine and pick up everything in this room. And no, I'm not making a joke there. That is 100% the truth. You have to pick up everything and look at everything. Maybe it's to force the player to have a full inventory before they need to set off and actually use the items. Or maybe it's just a way to mask bad programming or suspect game design. Well, that's one way to do a transition. The character just pops up as soon as you're looking the other way. It's like a bad magic act. Milena, we can start with the briefing. Okay, this is really weird. We are in the middle of the room and fade to black poof, we're here now. Talk about not having continuity with your character placement game. No, fade to black doesn't explain this random weird movement over here all of a sudden. We are tracking down a new criminal organization, the Vori, as we call them. We've linked them to a series of thefts and other crimes. On January 17th, four T-90 battle tanks were stolen in Ulyanovsk. Less than two months later, two MiG-29s were stolen in Novorossitsk. Well, I think I've heard this story before. There's a difference between stealing and, hey, I'm trying to sell on the black market to make ends meet because I used to be a general and now I get paid nothing because the damn Soviet Union fell apart. A monitoring camera could take pictures of the intervention team during this theft. Okay, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. A monitoring camera? Maybe he's talking about like a surveillance camera and it could take pictures. So are you saying there's a possibility that there was a surveillance camera that could have captured some video or photos of the theft? I think that's what he's trying to say. And I think the voice actors just read whatever the hell was in front of them and just thought about the paycheck at the end of the day. Their approach reminds me of a military elite, specifically a Russian military elite. Okay, so you do have some photos of them. So by could, you meant I have photos of the theft. All right, okay, yeah, we're slowly figuring this thing out. So our own people steal our weapons. Yes, it looks so, unfortunately. Stealing weapons is more lucrative than other criminal activities. Okay, that's a nice fun fact there, Colonel General. Who the hell are you again? Milena, there's something else. The police found a completely charred body last week. Since when do we deal with trite murders? Yeah, we're more into torture chambers. It is not just anyone, Milena. It's Artur Melnikov. Yeah, screw regular everyday murders. We're supposed to care about this guy who I think they were talking about in the intro cinematic. A character we've never met. So why the hell should we care about anything happening to him? But our heroine certainly does. It can't be. Arthur is too good to end this way. Wow, this voice actress did an amazing job conveying the same sense of pure indifference that I felt upon hearing about this character's death. There are reasons to believe in that, Milena. I can show you the pictures later. The identification is still taking place. The corpse is missing fingertips and teeth. It's not him. We assume that it is him. Artur has recently received leaked information from inside of the criminal organization. Initially, we didn't take this seriously. Well, I hope you learned a valuable lesson there, folks. If you're looking for information about a criminal organization you know nothing about, don't take seriously any of the leaked information that you get from inside of it, because how the hell would that be helpful at all? But this person, he or she is called Ulya, knew in advance about the theft of the T-90 main battle tank and the two MiG-29s. This Ulya is extremely creative in camouflage smuggling of information. She or he uses unsuspecting men or simple objects to convey the information. Well, that's a really complex way of saying, hey, this Ouya person's creative and gives us information in, you know, spy ways. Oh my god, the word choices in this game. It's not going to get much better, folks. Recently, we received this. What is that? Plans of the mobile loading and unloading platform for ships. It can be used in shallow water and is also suitable for submarines. Very practical object, especially in the wrong hands. Okay, that's just weird. I don't know if you know what practical means, game. That's a practical object, especially in the wrong hands. Huh, well maybe it's more of a delivery issue. Would it be possible, therefore, to exempt an entire submarine without shipyard? 
warheads, missiles, torpedoes, and so on. What are you going on about, lady? Are you trying to ask whether or not it's possible to take a submarine out of water with this thing? Because, you know, there's probably a better way of communicating that information to us. Yes. Do we have potential targets? The Kursk lies here in the harbor. A worthwhile goal. Exactly. Let's try to find out what's going on. I want to start with Melnikov. Then do it. Do we have any clues? There are just a few things. They are on your desk. So the colonel just can't hand us the items. He has to walk all the way over to our desk and place them on top of it. Now that's just really weird and reeks of this is a workaround, to me anyway. I kind of wonder if our developer just couldn't make it so that the colonel gave us the necessary items. They were just incapable of programming that in the game. So instead, they came up with this weird workaround that doesn't make any logical sense to me. But whatever, let's look inside of it and carry on with the damn game. Oh look, it's a bunch of case files that we can read through and get more invested in the lore behind this game. So we're caught up on the case files, which really are just a regurgitation of what we already heard, and now we're packing some heat. But still, we can't leave this area. Because you know why? Well, we haven't clicked on this blue mug over here. There is something lying under the coffee cup. Well, folks, we got some terrible puzzle design here. A crucial item is hidden underneath a mug. Now, you may be thinking, well, that's not too terrible. No, it's actually pretty terrible because you see, before the colonel places the documents on your desk, if you click on the mug, our heroine's like, oh, it's just a pointless mug. I don't see any use for it. So the game gives no hint, no indication, no notion that you need to re-click on the damn mug again to get that oh-so-crucial bit of clue. It's just really bad puzzle design because the only way to intuitively solve this puzzle is to re-click on everything in the damn room. Yes, here is the telephone number of Dimitri. Yeah, that's what we do with the clue. You see, it's the address of the guy who died, I guess. Something like that. Maybe it's his neighbor. I don't know. But we use a damn phone book on it, like it's some Dave Gilbert design game. And boom, now we have a number to call and a pointless conversation to hear. Hello? Damn, this game really likes its fade to blacks. It's like it's loading in a completely new area to accommodate for the item we're using, because again, it's all a bunch of workarounds strung together by duct tape. Um... Miss Labiadeva? Are you Mrs. Labiadeva? Yes. Oh, I am so sorry. Your husband, he's lost so much blood, he he was hurt so badly. Why the hell does she think we're Miss Lovey-Dovey? And honestly, everything she says holds no relevance at all. I happened to be passing as he went down the stairs. I'm so sorry. He's fine. He's getting better. Really? Oh, are we on speakerphone, by the way? Because it seems like we're on speakerphone. Or the game devs didn't want to animate a phone in her hand, because damn it, that'd be a lot of work for just one little chunk of the game. This makes me happy. I have to say, I didn't expect that. I'm very glad. He is such a nice person. He had recently rented the apartment from us. That's why I'm calling. We have unfortunately lost the keys. Oh, we're just on the way to our dasha. I suggest we meet next Tuesday in front of the apartment. We will have a spare key made until then. Good. Could you please tell me the address again? Sure. It is directly in Rumensk. Ulitsa Burkova, 22nd. Okay then. Until next week. So, by psychic powers, we now have the keys to the apartment, I guess. It's not like the landlady, I guess. That's the landlady? It's not like she told us where the hell she was going to put him. And also, why didn't she find it a little bit weird that we didn't know the address to our own apartment? Again, why am I asking questions? We can finally make some progress in this game and leave the damn torture room. It looks like Arthur rented a cover apartment from the Starkovas for his work. Alright, I think this game's working backwards. You see, we called the landlady about the apartment before we knew he even had an apartment. Okay, game. My head hurts now. Apparently, Arthur has said that he was married. What makes me very worried is that Miss Starkova spoke of a heavily bleeding injury. He definitely didn't fall down the stairs. Again, it's, it's all working backwards, folks. How the hell didn't we know that he said he was married? Didn't we set up the covert operation and his injury died? Wasn't he burned alive? What the hell is going on, game? I don't understand. Why is everything backwards? Oh no, we can finally leave this torture room. Door number 11. 
That should be Arthur's cover-up apartment. What is a cover-up apartment? What? Those are not the words that use English. So because we're scared of leaving fingerprints behind on an apartment doorknob, we have to put on plastic gloves and then we can enter the apartment after picking the lock. And no, there isn't a mini game here. You just use the item and poof, we're inside. That was easy. There have got to be some clues pointing to Arthur's disappearance. All right, thank you for telling me why I'm here, game. Because seriously, I didn't know why I was here. And also, thank you, voice actress, for recording on your cell phone. Because that audio quality drop isn't noticeable at all. The apartment is too clean. This has to be a cover-up apartment. So, a clean apartment's a cover-up. Like for a guy posing as a well-insert-your-own-homophobic joke here. It's all right. We pillage our way through the apartment and pick up every item that we can pick up. Until we find the key to this door, which we unlock. And then we open the interesting suitcase inside of it. No. So all that's inside this suitcase are some files that we can read that then motivate us to go to the next door neighbor and investigate them. Because, well, let her explain it. A file about the person Arthur observed. There are handwritten notes, too. There's something about financial troubles. Unknown person every Thursday, 1300. Wife and three kids. Contact K.L. What does that mean? Ah, apartment number 12. The apartment next door. Yeah, I, I don't know what any of that means either, lady. But what I do know is that we need to go next door. Well, no. Oh, wait, I forgot. I can't do that yet. Even though I think I should be able to do that. But that doesn't matter. That's just some weird puzzle design. Because you see, I forgot that I needed to hack the cell phone first. Yeah, we have to unlock this phone that's protected by a password. And here's the only hint as to what the password is. I think his birthday was in early August. So that's the game's only hint for a four-digit password. Eight. And that it was in early August. So we got eight and early. That's all the hints we're going to get. So you absolutely have to brute force your way through this puzzle in order to solve it. You have to go through every goddamn number with a combination of eight. Because, you know, these guys are in Europe. So maybe they use the, you know, month first, then date, then year. Whatever the crazy Europeans over there use. Yeah, not a very fun puzzle at all. Fabulous. Now I can access the phone. Let's see who Matur was in contact with. First message. Hello. Looks like I can get you even more from the old weapon system of the Kursk. Well, it sounds like to me, lady, that he was in contact with a much better voice actor. Good for me. I can really use it right now. Believe me. But we must get the whole deal done pretty fast. Call me as soon as you get my message. We'll talk face to face. Ideally today and somewhere outside town where we can be sure no one else will see us. Then we will discuss the rest, alright? Oh, and something else. Bring something with you that will prove you don't just have a big mouth. Some of the cash would be best. It's not about me, but I might be able to get you in touch with other people. And they want to make sure. I would not want to mess with them. Well then, I'm waiting. Alright, now that we have this recording, which somehow motivates us to unlock the door now to the other apartment that I knew needed to be unlocked anyway, but hey, whatever, we're in the other apartment now. And all we need to do here is move a wardrobe and try to get inside a duffel bag. But oh wait, we can't get inside of it because the zipper's broken or something silly like that. So instead, what we gotta do is double click on a potted plant. Yeah, this game really likes to make you double click on things you've already clicked on. And boom, we got a shard of some pot now, which we can use to tear open the duffel bag. But oh no, picking up the shard ripped our plastic gloves. So now we're gonna leave fingerprints everywhere. What a problem. I'll just cut a new opening. Let's see. Oh look, a bloody knife, which clearly was used to probably stab somebody, a chip set, and some money. Now we can leave this area. And oh yeah, you have to do a little bit of puzzling to get the damn knife. Yeah, you have to tear up some clothes with the shard from the clay pot. Yeah, you can't tear up anything else, just those clothes. Even though all you need is a rag, so you don't leave fingerprints behind. Although using a rag on the knife would probably smudge the fingerprints, but whatever. We're back at the torture room now. Wow, we randomly teleported again for no good reason. Wonderful. Arthur has followed a sailor from the Kursk. 
His name is Osip Gerasimov. There was a lot of money, circuit boards, and a blood-stained knife in his apartment. And also a different recording apparatus between the voiceover work. Come on. How'd you let that slip by, Dubs? But anyway, yeah, that's why we had to go inside that apartment. It was the apartment of a sailor, who I guess was involved with all this thieving. Although at the time, that wasn't clear at all. A good job again, storytellers, for telling me why I was doing something after the fact. From what you've told me, it would not surprise me if the circuit board appeared to be a covert hint from Lila, or something like this. So that's what you got from the circuit board. It's a covert hint to something. She's living in a land of adventure game logic. Here are the things from the suspect's apartment. Thank you, Milena. Our colleagues will look at the hardware and examine the knife. I want to talk to Gerasimov. It's best to speak with him directly on the Kursk. We should have someone there anyway. The Kursk has today received the command to run an exercise, and I want one of us on board. I could officially make the request at the Ministry, but this could do more harm than good. I have left some documents about the Kursk on your table look through them. Meanwhile, I will look at a way to bring you or Ulyanov aboard. So at least the colonel doesn't waltz over to the desk this time. We just do that ourselves, click through the little case file while he's just standing there in the middle of the room, not really doing anything. It's kind of awkward. Milena, we have found a way, but we must be quick. He never left the room. I guess he's psychic and communicated his request through his brain. The weapons officer of the course has been requesting for spare circuit boards for the missile control computer. He needs them for an exercise that starts tomorrow. All right, so I get this. Our contact left circuit boards in his apartment, and the cruise needs circuit boards, so clearly something's going to go on with that sub because circuit boards. The ministry has approved it, on condition that a quick system review will be performed. The person authorized and responsible for reviewing is on her way with the boards. Her name is Tatiana Sakalova. Then I will go on board and call myself Mrs. Sokolova in the next few days. Exactly. Ulyanov ensures that Miss Sokolova has a little accident and will be blocked at least 24 hours. Excellent. You will soon receive your uniforms and papers. It is of course expected that you will stay on the course after it sails. So make up something to remain on board. Be which the captain, hide yourself, do what you have to, but stay on board. And the real Sokolova? We can keep hold of her, but for not more than a day. In less than 24 hours, our little trick will be revealed, and the incompetent people from Ministry and Gru Military Intelligence will knock on my door because of her. That won't matter for you. In 24 hours, the course will have dived deep already. How can I communicate with you? It will not be possible. Mobile phones don't function underwater. Also, there is no communication during the exercise of Kursk with the HQ. From this moment, you cannot disembark. You can't reach anyone, and you have to watch out for yourself. Find out more about Asip Garasimov. Also, if you can, find out who is Lilia. First of all, protect the Kursk, if it's in danger. I want to have the Kursk safe and untouched in the port after the exercise. And you, too. Understood. All right, I hardly understood any of that. We're going on a sub now because it could be in danger, and we're going to find out some secrets about some other stuff we uncovered that I'm vaguely sure exists. But oh yeah, we suddenly have our military outfit and everything, and we put it on, and then we give the general a bunch of items we accumulated, and then boom, we can go on the sub. What the hell's going on in this game? What did I tell you, Igor Sergeyevich? The monkeys from the Ministry really forced another testing of the new torpedoes upon us. And on top of that, they're sending us a woman on board. Oh, that is so them. They're trying to make this captain sound like a valley girl, and this voice actor is clearly having fun. I have to battle those pencil pushers for weeks for every bag of potatoes and new blankets for my sailors. But they always have enough money for harassment and controlling us. One should think the Admiralty holds you in higher regards. After you piloted the Kursk into the Meridian Sea recently without being detected. Did that voice actor flub his line or was he reading a different script? Because he said Meridian Sea, when clearly he meant Mediterranean Sea. There was a lot more letters, man. Oh, as if. Oh, as if. That is totally them. Oh my god, have you seen Tina has a new Ferrari? Hero here and Motherland Protector there. 
I don't give a damn about their empty words, Igor Sergeyevich. The young lady is here. Captain Vladin, Lieutenant Tatiana Sokolova. And I just teleport into existence to make for some really awkward transitions. I come to check the newly built weapon systems. Just so you get it clear straight away, you'll do your job as quickly as humanly possible. Whenever you leave the ship or return, you'll report to the first officer. You talk to no one and don't stand in anyone's way. As soon as you're done, vanish. I'm in no mood to have the crew start a mutiny because of you. The sailors won't even see me, Captain. Mm, I highly advise that be the case. You are under observation, understood? One wrong move and you'll be thrown off the ship. Is that clear? Got it. We have prepared a cabin for you. You can make yourself comfortable there. Thank you. A pretty cabin they have prepared for me. First thing I should do is meet Korobernikov and complete my official job. Okay, so we're on a sub now, and that ends chapter one of Undercover Missions Curse. Yeah, we'll be a part two. I'm not too sure about part three or anything else because believe it or not, I haven't beaten this game yet. But oh my god, it's a doozy already. So yeah, there's going to be some more about this game at some point. Hopefully you guys will be around and see me then. Bye bye.